Hi everybody, good evening. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, in the opening, we talk about dedicated to the oneness, and for people who've seen the show before, you know that that's, that really is the theme for all of us as human beings to experience that, that experience of love, of oneness, of perfection, of unity, of lack of separation, that is the, the, the necessity and the calling of this human life. And for us on Bridging Heaven and Earth, that's what this show is about, to bring you guests, to bring you videos, to bring you musicians, to bring you books that help light that flame. And if the flame is already lit, to fan that flame, to bring that experience more and more into our everyday experience, into our everyday life. But, you know, we realize that I was talking to somebody this week and that not everybody has that experience of oneness and, and the experience of love all the time. And I was thinking, you know, as human beings, a start could be, and I mean, of course, I'm not the first one to say this, but we should treat each other as we'd like to be treated. And we don't do that all the time. If we could remember, does this feel good the way I'm treating this person? Would I like that? I mean, even in the New Age sometimes, I mean, we deal with hundreds of people from all over. And sometimes, what does it take to not get a, to, to give, give a call back? What does it take to respond in a way that's loving, that's empowering, rather than a way that's not empowering and not loving? I mean, you know, so often we treat people not in the way we'd want to be treated. So, you know, for us tonight, I mean, it, it seems like that is a first step for all of us. Anyone watching this show, let's make that dedication. If tomorrow we can't experience the love in its f full flower, in, in its oneness, in its perfection, let us at least walk in this earth with the experience that we want to treat everybody as we'd like to be treated. And I think that would start a change, and then that openness and that love would start to flower in our lives. And that's really what we want. We do want to experience the one, the love, the oneness, the perfection, where there is no separation, where the only thing that exists is love. But as a start, if we're not having that experience, let's go out tomorrow and just treat every human being, every tree, every dolphin, as we'd like to be treated. we like, you know, to be trash. Would we like to have in our waterways or in our life, in our air, would we like toxic fumes thrown into them? I guess we, I guess we must because we do it to ourselves. But just to come into that recognition, to let that openness come into our lives more and more. And tonight we have somebody who, who that oneness and that love and that dedication is his life's work, his life's joy. He travels the world bringing music and song and workshops to everyone who 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 listen, he he just got back from Hawaii and he's on his way to Australia tomorrow morning. Eric Berglund's a master musician. He's a harpist and he's a healer. He has six best-selling CDs. But the main core of his being is to bring that love into his own life and to share that love in any way possible. So tonight, what we'd like to do is start the show with a short meditation, and then. Uh, go into a first set with Eric, which I'm sure will be extraordinary. I heard him play this afternoon. If you have a, if you have a way to, to tape this show and to get the music high quality, to put in a tape and, and do that, because you're going to be in for an extraordinary experience. So please join me in a short meditation, and then we'll go to Eric. Thank you. Eric's first set tonight is going to be Chant to the Archangels and Light Prayer, uh, written and performed by Eric Berglund. And his third piece in the first set is Let Me Remember, written by Omen Ken and Carrie Shanti Norman, and is going to be performed by Eric Berglund. So whenever you're ready, just be prepared, settle in, and let the love come. Thank you.
the gods be still in thee. Let every voice be still now out to thee. Let every voice the gods be still in me. Let me remember I am one with God. Peace to my brother who is one with me. Let me remember what my And that I share with thee, I am sustained by the love of God. All that I give is given to myself. I thank my Father for his gifts. Would I enter now, for I am surrounded by the love of God. Let me be still and listen to the truth. Let every voice but God's be still. What my purpose is, let all the world be blessed with peace through me. Wow. Thank you, Eric. That was fantastic. So, uh, now we're going to have a, uh, a, a, a video a, uh, of a bunch of slides. Actually, we didn't know it when, it first, when Eric first sent us these, but uh, if, you, if you recall, people have seen the show a lot before, we had a show with Omashar who does the opening and closing, uh, the music on the opening and closing, and he came on with Walter Matheson. And he did a slideshow with uh, his music behind Walter. And then we found out that uh, Eric also had done that. So uh, we're going to show uh, some slides by Walter Matherson. And uh, this is music by Eric again. So 
Uh, I think you'll love it, and then when you come back, we'll be uh, talking to Eric on the set, so. Beautiful. So we're on the set with Eric. Welcome, Eric. Fantastic to have you here. So how did you get started in, in using music as like a healing tool for people in the earth and just to bring that love in? How did it begin for you? Well, um, it's interesting that you mentioned that Joel Andrews has been on this show, and I lived in New York City, and um, Joel Andrews came, and I was real inspired by his um, playing the harp and what he was doing. And I had... Um, um, read various esoteric books on the power of music. I, I always wanted to change people and do something for the world. Um, mm -hmm. I'm part of the 60s generation. Right. And um, then when I, I was originally going to do it with film, and I had studied film, and but then when I read all this about music, I, I determined I was going to do music. And I did what many of the um, teachings say. I made visualizations, and I wrote up my affirmations, and and this was before I ever even dreamed of playing the harp, but I had me singing and with all the people and I had all the pictures of angels carrying harps and bringing healing all over the people. And then, then I wound up hearing Joel Andrews and I, wound up, I met Mildred Dilling, who is the, also the teacher of Harpo Marx. And uh, I went to a concert of hers and she said, uh, I, well first I said, gee, I enjoyed your performance, I always wanted to play the harp. And she said what many people have said to me, well, <laughs> why don't you? <laughs> and uh, I wound up running a harp and taking lessons, and <laughs> one thing has led to another. Wow. So, I mean, you weren't like a, a child prodigy. This was Oh, heavens on. no. I didn't start the harp until my 30s. Wow. So, so and you just travel the world just making music and, and letting mm -hmm. that energy flow through you. Yeah, I'm so grateful. I'm... Uh, as, as you mentioned, I'm going to Australia tomorrow. I've, um, the, I go to Brazil almost every year and been to different places in South America and go to Europe, over the States. And um, it's really wonderful to get to share music and to share the healing, which is another part of what I am with people everywhere. And, and describe the healing. Describe how it works. Describe how it feels when you do it and you know what the responses you've gotten and you've heard from people. Well, they've... Um, the healing, 
it takes many different forms depending on, on what's needed. And I always say at the beginning that I can't claim or promise anything, but God can do anything. God can do miracles, but we have to ask. And so then um, there have just been all these wonderful miracles. Lately I've been doing phone healings. The week before Hawaii I did a phone healing with someone who um, hadn't walked for a number of years and on the phone she got off her crutches and was walking. Really? Um, we now had wait a, a second, so, and this was you playing music over the phone? No, 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 no. Just talking? Yeah, it's talking. I, I t it's different with different people. Sometimes, you see, there's, I feel that um, anything that comes up to be healed is something that wasn't healed in the past. So sometimes it's from past lives, sometimes it's in childhood, but there was some time when our thoughts and our feelings kind of jammed and it's created a knot. And so we go back to a find disharmony, that. A disharmony, a blockage. Yeah, a blockage. Yeah. blockage. Yeah. And so then we go back and find out what that is. And sometimes you have to know what it is. Um, Last week I did a healing with someone in Hawaii who had um, been in pain for the last 15 years and she had several operations all in here and she had to know what that past life was in order to move forward. And when it did, all the pain left and she hasn't had any, any so, pain So, okay, since. so she, she is in your presence or she's on the phone with you. Do you see it? Do you hear it? Do you just know? I feel. You feel it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so you would describe your past life was there was some incident. Yeah. Why don't you just talk about the, you know, yeah. well, change the names to protect whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, there can just be anything. For example, mm, in Brazil, one lady came and um, she was shaking. She was just shaking all the time. And um, she also said that she didn't get along with her mother. Well, when I looked into her past life, her um, mother had been her arch enemy in the past life. And so in this lifetime, she chose this enemy to be her mother so that she would be face to face with the issue. And, you know, even if you marry, you can divorce and walk away. But right. your mother is your mother for your whole life. Mm -hmm. And so when we went back and changed the energy from that lifetime, then um, she stopped shaking right there. And, uh, wow. And it's really powerful when it happens, usually... Um, so it doesn't always include music? Oh, no, or no, the no, harp. no, I don't use the harp at all. <laughs> but um, what well, I did at one point, but then it became more far powerful for me just to tune in and, and, and see whatever it was with people and, and whether... Sometimes it can do music. There was once... Um, because uh, Joel Andrews uses music a I lot. Know, and, you I know, I know. That's specifically the yeah, way he generally... And, and you've used to do that and you don't do that anymore. Yeah, I, um, what, I, what I'm hoping is that um, by having such a strong momentum with healing, because um, for example in Brazil I'll be do healing from early in the morning till sometimes after midnight and, and I was there five weeks and then there was there's still so many people that wanted healings that you know they wanted me to stay several more weeks I just have to you know come back right. and there'll be people out in the halls just waiting and they'll feel the energy in the halls and people are even healed in the halls sometimes wow. and um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just gonna play the harp what the hell yeah this <laughs> yeah Holy well Christ, the freak the <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. you're really moving. I mean, you play the harp and you love it and it's beautiful, but really when you go to these cities, as much as you make music, you do healings, like yeah. one right after the other. Yeah, but then what my, my goal, you know, we're always um, pushing forth goals with what we want. Otherwise, I mean, that's how we change our lives, by putting a goal and then instead of just being a ship that's just, you know, moved by the current, mm -hmm. then we have a direction to go. Mm -hmm. And my goal is that, you know, more healings can happen through the music. And um, already there are wonderful stories. Um, like, I, I don't always hear the stories till later, but for right, example, I, I was in Florida my last trip, and one lady said that the trip before, <laughs> she um, um, was so moved in the concert and that after the concert she was in a real euphoric state, and then she had to get on a plane. And she was always afraid of planes and always got very sick on planes. And so she got on the plane when was waiting for, it took the form of panic attacks, and she was waiting for her panic attack to come, and it never came. And now she's been on planes ever since, and they never came back. Never came back. And that was from the concert. And I've had... Um, and even from the CDs, you know, I get many letters saying how many healings there have been from the CDs, particularly, oh, 
times when people pass on and, and so on. One lady in Brazil told me that she had a, a very high fever and um, she put on one of my CDs and she was taken in, into this beautiful meditation and, and to this beautiful mountain and put in a lake and then when the music ended she was taken out and she was totally healed and she was fine. And then when she saw me finally give a concert in Brazil, I showed these slides that we just saw now which are of Mount Shasta where I live in California and she said that was the very mountain that she saw in this vision mm. the years before when she was healed. And what do you attribute it to? The vibration of the music? The, what well, would, it's what a, would be like if we could say anything reasonable? What do you attribute it to? Or is it just... Yeah, it's a combination of many things. I think all things, at the beginning of the, the show, you said everything is about unity. And so everything kind of combines into one. It isn't just one thing that makes it. It's a combination. So probably, number one, I'm playing the harp, which um, metaphysically different instruments represent different parts of the body. And what the harp represents is the heart. And from ancient times, the harp has always been associated with the spiritual. In our culture, of course, we associate it with angels. Mm -hmm. and, but in the ancient Vikings felt that they were ladders to heaven, and they had these tall harps like this, and they play them all at once. Uh, the, at the time when Egypt was pure, before it was corrupted, only the high priests were allowed to play them, and they were encrusted with jewels. Throughout the whole history, harps are associated with the spiritual. And then I particularly have a strong momentum of healing, and it opened... How did your healing start? I mean, that's an interesting thing. It is, actually. Of. It opened up for me when I was in South America. I had been living in New York City and was part of a group um, that was with a woman by the name of Hilda Charlton. Have you ever heard of her? I think I have, but yeah. I, I have a you know memory span of about 30 yeah. seconds. Oh. So I barely remember. <laughs> <laughs> but the name yeah. sounds familiar. Well, she was wonderful. Uh, um, maybe you've heard of Alan Cohen? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, he was he actually worked... supposed to come on this season. Oh, great. Yeah, but it, you know we didn't work the dates out. Oh. It couldn't work out. But... Well, he was also with Hilda. And oh. the first book that he wrote, The Dragon Doesn't Live Anymore, he right. talks quite a bit about Hilda. Right. And he says, a group of us, well, I was part of all that group. Mm -hmm. And she, um, at the end, uh, she would have a thousand, almost a thousand people at every meeting at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And then at the end of every meeting, we would do healings. And we'd all put our hands forth and we'd go, Om, and we'd just have miracle healings. And, and so I was just part of that miracle energy that was generated. And then I was on a trip in South America where I was playing the harp in Venezuela. And... Um, we had one time where I was taken to, uh, just the presenters were invited to this beautiful place, the Andes in the background, and we ate outside, and it was real gorgeous. And then they had their meeting, and I didn't have to be part of the meeting being a musician. And there was one person that obviously needed healing. So I said, well, let's just ohm like we do at Hilda's in sign language, because I didn't speak Spanish, but somehow we communicated. And then the person was healed. And the next morning, I had people come into my hotel room asking for healings. And I said, ah, what? <laughs> I didn't do that. And when was this? This was 10 years ago. Wow. So that was the beginning of my journey. They invited me back. They paid my way to come back to that place. And then um, uh, I was just doing healings from when I got up till I went to bed, and they didn't advertise or anything. It was just, you know, donation, and it was one person after another, and it was like a great initiation for me because God worked so perfectly. I grew up, um, uh, my parents were college professors and grew up in a very mental environment, and um, f to go there, it was like someone just changed the channel on... Um, the it seems set that's unreasonable, me. right? Yeah, because right. I couldn't have just shifted in the environment that I grew up in. Right. And then I didn't speak Spanish, and everybody there just totally, 100% believed that these healings could take place. And so it just, it happened. And then I feel that it tuned into past lives that I've had where I've been a healer in the past. And so everything kind of comes together. Do you teach other people how to heal? Yes, that's that's because um, what I'm doing isn't special at all. All of us can do it. I was just talking with a friend in the set before here, and she's doing all these marvelous healings. And we're in such, I feel we're in, in the most extraordinary time we could possibly be here on the planet. And um, while the media 
focuses on the negative news, in, for example, the Columbine shootings and mm -hmm. so on, right. um, the same force that's moving all of us that can move negatively is also moving positively and allowing things like these miracles, which are not unique to me at all. They're happening to everyone everywhere, not everyone, but people that allow this to happen to and focus their attention for these lines to happen. But the times that we're in are helping precipitate and trigger deeper memories that we have. You mean coming up. into the new millennium, yes. the year 2000? Yeah. So yeah. you can feel the changing energy oh, structures, oh, it, just it, the I tremendous sure power and turbulence. Tre now. Tremendous. And um, particularly since I get to travel so much, I can feel the pulse in different places of the planet. For example, um, last spring I was in Germany, and different, I find different places on the planet represent different chakras. The chakras mm. are the different um, nerve energy centers in our centers, body, yeah. and each energy center represents a different um, uh, quality. And the third, Germany represents the power center in the solar plexus, so they've been working with the positive and misuse of power for a long period of time. And when Kosovo happened, that r triggered all those things that hadn't been healed in Germany to come up to be healed. And just before Germany, I was in Canada, and one person there, I was giving a workshop, and a lady came up and said, you know, I feel, um, um, she was very ill, she was coughing, all this stuff, and uh, she asked if she could be the demonstration person, and she came up, and uh, it turned out that she had had a past life dying in the Holocaust, and she was going through the exact symptoms right now that she was doing then, triggered by watching the news of Kosovo on the television. Now, once that was revealed to her, I mean, that was the unblocking, that was the clearing point? Well, that, that began to open it up, and many people in the room um, saw this lifetime, and people were, say, giving all kinds of feedback as to what happened to her at that time, and then before our eyes, you know, the color came back in her face, she stopped coughing, um, it was very dramatic. And then when I went to Germany, again, I found um, quite a bit. So the energy of Germany and the World War II was up to be healed. See, many of the people in Kosovo are the exact souls reincarnated that were there in the Holocaust. And the same victim uh, persecutor have just played out these roles, switching the roles back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And right now, many, many different conditions that have been on the planet are up to be healed. Brazil, for example, it represents the first chakra. And it had been... Representing what? The first, the first chakra, chakra the, Which, as a country. Oh, I see. But what is the first chakra? The first chakra... Which people are unaware of that. Yeah, right. Um, the first chakra represents um, money, for example, your support in the world, um, all everything the on the earth plane. plane. The material plane. The material plane. Right, okay. And, you know, in history... And that's usually the... Uh, root chakra. Right, at the, the base root of the chakra, spine. and then it goes up yeah. if people are... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So in Brazil, what's happened is that <clears throat> they had... People come in and they have tremendous wealth. They have them, uh, all these amethysts, beautiful gems. Most of the jewels you know, come from right. Brazil. Yeah, it's Amazon very, mines. very wealthy. Yeah, the and, of course, and, the, and, and of course, in the rainforest, the cures for the world. Um, there's just it, the wealth of, is just incredible in Brazil. Well, it's just been stripped again and again and again. The whole Industrial Revolution was financed by the Portuguese came in, in took all the money and then paid their debts to the English and it financed the Industrial Revolution and was built on slaves. And, and right now, they're having a terrible time with the economy. Um, really, really difficult. I'd have, um, ooh, I'd say eight, no, seven out of ten people would be asking for a financial healing. And um, going in the inner planes um, of, of that, it's like they not only have, of course, their individual karma that would resonate with the country karma, but then they have that whole country karma. So I'd have to go in like a bulldozer, just pulling in. And um, I gave a real big workshop that was advertised on the radio, and everyone came because it was for finances. And in my last concert, one lady came up and said to me, she, with tears in her eyes, she was just so grateful for that workshop because she was a teacher, and she shared a bunch of the techniques with her children. And um, the next day after she shared it, every single child was given a gift. Wow. Mm -hmm. All randomly, all... Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that's really unbelievable. Yeah. All right, so I guess uh, we got... Uh, 
We're going to take uh, a second video now, and this video is from Healing the Earth from Mount Shasta. It's a video by Eric, and it's uh, Lord, come and heal the world. So we'll see that now, and then uh, we'll come back, and Eric will play some more songs. You know, it's just I was just thinking, is there any way we could just hear Eric talk more? We need a whole other <laughs> show with you on the set. But uh, let's just do it this way for now. We'll do the second video whenever we're ready with that. Take her away. Welcome back. Uh, before I forget, I'd like to uh, give everybody the information that if anyone is interested in where Eric's playing or healings from Eric, uh, please call me workshops, uh, where he's going to be, where he's traveling, uh, how to get his CDs. Please call me how to get to his website. Uh, it's 805-687-2053. That's Alan, 805-687-2053. And what we're going to do tonight, we've done it on different shows, but tonight we're going to you know, say goodbye to you now and then go to Eric's going to finish the set with three songs. He's going to do uh, My Heart Will Go On from the Titanic, uh, music by James Horner, lyrics by Will Jennings, performed by Eric. He'll do Healing Light, which is written and performed by Eric. 
and the great invocation, music by Chris Rudolph, uh, lyrics by Alice Bailey, the white magic uh, Alice Bailey, and it'll be performed by, uh, by Eric. So we just want to you know, thank you all for coming. It's time that we let the love flow. It's time that we really connect it to each other and recognize we're one family in this together and just to let that love flow. So whenever we're ready, we're going to end the show. Good night. Thanks for coming. Stay for the next 15 or 20 minutes. Eric's just going to play some incredible music and sing. So good night. God bless you. And here's Eric. Thank you. We just had a song for healing the world. And in order to heal the world, first we need to heal ourselves. And of course that comes through what Alan just spoke about, and that is love. So this next song is about love, and it's about the love that breaks through all barriers. The next piece that I'm going to play is one that 
I did, wrote for healing. And as I play it, I invite you to just totally relax where you are and, and ask the angels to come to you. And if there's any place in, in your soul or your body that needs healing, just the, ask the angels to come there now.
so many of us on the planet um, are looking for healing and one of the biggest things that I feel is happening on the earth now is the change where people can change from asking what's in it for me to what can I give? How can I serve? And in this time of great change, one of the most wonderful things that we can do is to not only be there for each other and treat them as we would like to be treated, but to also then pray for our earth and all the people that are on it. So I'm going to end now with this prayer for the earth um, and I invite your prayers to join with me. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend. into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wheels of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve, the purpose which the masters know and serve, let life